homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today it's time to make some tomato cages. Now, on a homestead, it's hard to come up with all the money you need to do everything you need to do in one year. Now, we moved to this homestead uh, six years ago, and we have constantly been adding to our infrastructure. Well, every year I add tomato cages. Last year, I only added 24. This year, I'm going to add some more. Uh, we plant two types of tomatoes. We plant the determinants, which only grow about four feet, Romas and Rutgers. Then we plant indeterminates, uh, Tommy Toes, uh, Pink Belgiums, Cherokee Purples, uh, Sun Sugars, Old Germans, or just called German, uh, a yellow tomato that I just can't remember its name, and uh, Little Red Tommy Toes. Now those will grow up to 11 feet long, so it takes a great big cage. But the deal is, I have cages on this homestead that mom's mom had. Okay? We make them out of this big old concrete wire, and it will last you a lifetime. You'll hand them down to your children and grandchildren. Now I have about 120 of the little tomatoes, the determinants, the ones that are going to grow four feet. I have about 120 of those, Romas and Rutgers. Well, I need a lot of cages. I've got 24 cages, and then I've got some of the little three ring cages uh, that aren't as good. So I always need, I'm needing those kind of cages. I'm not going to make enough of them today to have that many, but I'm going to make a bunch. Uh, I have about 70 of the uh, indeterminates, between 70 and 80 indeterminate tomatoes, and those I have probably about 40 cages, which is enough for me to get by with. So today I'm going to concentrate, I'll probably make a couple, a couple of indeterminate cages, but for the most part what I'm going to make today are determinate cages. They're going to be two and a half feet long. And what am I going to use? Well, I'm going to use this concrete wire. This is concrete reinforcing wire. Uh, the local big box store sells it for $138 a roll or approximately, approximately a uh, dollar a foot. Just a little less, about 89 cents a foot. Uh, this is a 150 foot row. You can roll you can buy them uh, in 50 foot, 100 foot, and 150s, but this is a 150 foot roll. And uh, out of that, let's talk about some math. Okay, let's do a little math. I know, it's homesteader math. You've got to do some every now and then. Now, we want these cages to be somewhere between 15 and 18 inches in diameter. Okay, so if we looked at 15 inches, and we multiplied that out, pi times the diameter gives us the circumference of the circle. Well, pi is 3.14, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to say 3. So 3 times 15, that's 45 inches. 3 times 18, 3 times 8 is 27, 57 inches. So I'm going to go anywhere in between there. So I'm going to do it simple as I can because life's just that way. Do stuff as simple as you can. So if I look at this concrete wire and I measure the distance between the rungs, it's right at six inches. So anywhere between 45 and 57 is what I want to do. Well, six inches, seven times six is 42, and eight times six is 48. So if I've got eight of these, okay, eight of them, then I'm good to go. All right, eight of them will make it so that it makes me uh, 48 inches, and 48 inches divided by three 
okay it's going to be somewhere around 16 so 16 inch diameter circle is plenty big enough for any of our tomatoes that we do and you have to come up and tie the arms up anyway or else it'll lay outside the the cages but anyhow 16 inches is big enough so if I do 48 and then I go to the next one and cut off for length if I do eight of these so that makes it simple for the math so let's lay this out and get these started first off let me put you over here where you can see use number 744 for your tractor bucket and your new and your three dollar bucket forks is making cages using this as a workspace so I'm gonna pull this up here It just unwinds. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be my eighth one. So, now let's talk about dealing with this wire. This stuff is tough. It is not, again, let me say, it is not easy to cut. These are Klein's, an idea of how big they are. There's my hand, and sitting at the base of my hand, you can see. Those have a cutter on the side. They're all right for cutting little, little fence wire, but no, won't cut this, you'll strain yourself to death. Paradox, again, same size. Those won't cut it either. Moving up the line, got a pair of these cutters. These are stout. They'll cut a whole lot of stuff, but they'll work you to death cutting this wire. Fence and pliers. You know, this is for putting up fence out in the field. Uh, it does all right with eight gauge wire, but this heavy steel stuff, it just doesn't, or 12 gauge wire, uh, it just doesn't do much for this. You'll, you'll strain yourself to death trying to use your fence pliers. Now, here's a set of clines. This is what you want to use to bend this wire. You don't want to use, here's a comparison. I have all different sizes. Here's a comparison. This is a typical one like an electrician would carry. It's great for doing number 12 copper wire and all that kind of stuff, bending it. And this is what you need around the homestead if you're going to deal with this kind of stuff for bending it. You need the biggest pliers you can to make that bending as simple as possible. But this still won't cut this wire. It'll still work you to death. You need these. And this is not a great big pair. If you compared it to my arm, see, it comes back to about my elbow. It's not a great big pair. Only opens about that far. Compare it to my finger. I can't even put my finger all the way in there. See? So, but this will do just fine for what it is for cutting this wire. So, let's get started at that. Just as a side note, this old wire is so tough that if you cut it, if you bend it and then cut it, and I can cut that off again right there, and I can substitute these in for fence post staples. Okay, this stuff is tough. But, that's not what we're, we're talking about today. Any little pieces that you drop. This is my, I'm doing this right outside my shop in my driveway. Any of these you drop, pick them up. They'll go through your tire just like a nail. Okay, here we are with the wire. Now, if I go, start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be my eighth rung right here. Okay, so what I want to do 
is right here where the next cage is going to start. I don't want to leave a little piece of wire sticking out. That's just something to scrape your hands on while you're reaching in to get a tomato. Okay? Makes cuts on your little hands. You don't want that. So you want to cut this off as close as possible to this next level. And uh, you take these big old cutters. And you get right against that. And it makes it really, really simple to cut these with these great big old cutters. Okay, let me get down the row and do that. Okay, once you get that cut off, you just turn it right over here. Don't get it hung in there. Other wire. You just turn it over here and get ready to assemble. Once you pull this away from your other roll, you take this and you pull it up. And you pull this one, pull this one to you. And then you take that wire and you would hook it. But this is the hard way to do it. Okay? It's really, really hard to do it that way. So I'm going to turn it around and hopefully show you the easy way. The very first thing you want to do is you want these to be sticking out. That way when you've got your hand inside, you don't draw it back and rub across these, which they're sharp as a bra. So you don't want that. Now they'll rust up and, and the little sharp edges will go away. But So you want these to be bent out so that they'll be sticking out of the cage and not sticking to the inside. So you take this and just make a hook. You do that for all of them. Hook. And the bigger your pliers are, the easier this is to do. Hook. And you could just do a couple of these. Okay? You could just do a couple. But... I'm kind of anal retentive. I want them all done. So I want them all to be hooked. So there that is. Now once you've got those bent, you just pull your cage forward. Ow. Pull your cage forward. And catch the hooks. That makes life so much simpler. But start from the inside and work your way out. Because if you don't, you'll wish you had because you can't get them to hook once you start doing that that wants to pull back apart. So if you start at one end and go to the other, by the time you put that one in, some of these will want to be coming out. So. Now, once you do that, one of the things you need to do is go back and squeeze all these in as much as you can. Okay? It'll save your little hands out in the field. You know, if you squeeze those down. I don't like getting stuck by this big old concrete wire. Now don't squeeze it down to where it goes all the way into the inside. Just squeeze it down where it's going to stay close on the wire.
Okay, that is an indeterminate tomato cage. You can see right here, I'm five foot eight. So this is five foot tall. So the tomato's gonna grow up and over the top and all the way down the other side and all the way to the ground, most of my tomatoes will. But our goal was to have something that was gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 16 inches in diameter, 15, anywhere between 15 and 18. Let's see what we got. And it's a little oblong right this minute. Now I've bent it a little bit. What have I got? I've got a 16 inch diameter circle. Okay, that's a large indeterminate tomato cage. Now I'm going to turn this into a determinate tomato cage. Okay, let's turn this into a determinate tomato cage. Remember, our determinants are only going to grow about four foot tall, so your cage only has to be about two foot. Well, this will be a two and a half foot, but I'm going to stick six inches into the ground. So, let's talk about that. All you have to do, and you really, if you know you're going to be making determinants, you don't have to bend this wire. All right? Just saying. Uh, if you look, you're going to come to the center. If I count these, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. This is the center wire. It's right dead center of this cage, which is great. So all you have to do now is come up here and start cutting it. Uh, again, cut it as close as you can so you're not scraping your arms when you're harvesting your tomatoes. Some people even take a grinder and go back over this so that it doesn't... Uh, so that they're not scraping their arms. Some, I even might do it on some cages that are exceptionally sharp. Okay. Now, once that cuts off, what you've got is you've got a tomato cage here that from here to the end here is two feet, and you have these six inch wires that just stick in the ground. Now, you can go back and look at our tomato video where we were staking Romas and you see that I have these cages you just take that cage put it over your tomato push it right down on the ground and there's no stake required this tomato cage will last you a lifetime now what do I have to do for the next part well I have to take this cage and cut the ring off Okay, I've cut the ring off, and you're left with this ring. Now, being a homesteader, I want to find something to do with these. I haven't decided what yet, but I'm sure I'm going to come up with a, with a solution of something to do with these. Uh, if you've got a suggestion of what to do with these extra rings, leave it in the comments. I'd like to come up with something to do with them. I've thought about making a shelf, or uh, making a spare cage, or uh, just a whole bunch of different stuff. That I've thought about doing with these, but right now, for the time being, they're piled in one spot beside my garage. Okay, it's time to do a little math. I've got uh, these four foot, these two foot cages, or I make five foot cages. Well, this wire is 150 feet. Well, if you multiply that by 12, that comes out to 1,800 inches, 1,800 inches. Well, I'm cutting off 48 inches at a time. Well, 48 goes into that 37 and a half times. Well, if you do that, that's 37 large tomato cages, 37. So I've got to have, I don't have to have 37 large tomato cages. I've got almost enough large tomato cages so I'm going to put the majority of this into making the small cages. So it would give me somewhere in the neighborhood 
of 74 small tomato cages. Well, 74, I've got 122 plants, so 74 probably gets me to where I won't ever have to, to make another set of these tomato cages in my lifetime. My kids won't have to do it, okay? They'll have tomato cages for their entire lifetime too and give them to their kids. So, if they even care about this lifestyle. My kids don't seem to care, but that's okay. They have to live their life. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this homesteading stuff every week, sometimes one, sometimes five videos. Just depends on what I've got going on in the homestead that week. If you hit the little bell, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. And with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing and make tomato cages.